Welcome to McFly Angler. I've never been a guide, but I still enjoy teaching people how to catch more fish. So join me in this video where I show you how I tie this fly. You will need a short shank, but wide gap hook, and a large orange, red, or pink bead that fits on it. I like this Risen 068 in size 4, and there are 4.8 size brass bead. Put the bead on your hook, and then secure the hook onto your vise. Now the bead will do a few things. One is give the fly a little weight, and the other is to help to flay the materials out to give a hollow center. It also looks really good, almost like a gill. For thread, I'm using Vivas 140 Power Thread in white. Start your thread right behind the bead, and trim off the waist. Now, grab a few strands of pearl flash boo and cut them in half. You should end up with about 8 to 16 total strands or so, and wetting them helps keep them together. Tie in the flash right behind the bead and at the center of the clump. Then fold over the forward facing flash and tie it in rearward as well, and then build a bit of a thread base to rest the bead on. Once the bead has some thread to secure it, then do a whip finish and clip off the excess thread. Wet your fingers and stroke the flash strands rearward to help keep them together. Now add a bit of gel super glue and push the bead back up onto the thread dam. Then start your thread again in front of the bead. Now we need some unique hair, which is a clear type fiber. Clip off a small amount of the white and then cut the strands in half and in half again. It's also very important to clean up the tips and cut them square. Place this material on top of the hook, and make a few tight wraps to hold it in place. With your thumbnail, proceed to rotate the fiber around the hook shank, fanning it out. Try to cover the entire bead with materials, which can get a little tricky, but keep playing with it and it will end up covering all the way around. Once covered, make a few tight wraps to ensure no fibers pull loose. Now clip the same quantity of whatever top color unique hair you're using. In this case I'm using olive. Cut this in half, but not in fourths like last time. Make sure the tip is square, and then tie it in on top of your fly with a few tight wraps. You can fan this material out slightly, but try to keep the majority of the fibers on top of the fly like so. Once you're happy with the material placement, then make a few tight wraps to clean up the head and hold the materials on tightly. Now pull out some ice dub and pull apart your fingers a few times to align the fibers. Cut the stubbing into thirds and then separate them like so. Wrap this clump of dubbing around the head of the fly and make a few loose wraps to hold it in place. As you can see, I am now bringing the thread up slightly to just shy the hook eye. Then stroke all the fibers rearward and make a few tight wraps in front of them. Now you can whip finish your fly. I like to comb out this fly with a stiff toothbrush, and then trim off some of the really frizzy fibers. Now we need some eyes, and I like these self-adhesive flat eyes. Make sure you have the right size that will not cover the hook eye, and also not cover the orange bead. Place the eyes on evenly on both sides of the fly, and use your nail to press them in tightly. Now we need two types of UV resin, Solar as Thin Hard and Solar as Flex. First, let's place a drop of Thin Hard in between the eyes on the top and bottom of the fly. I like doing this in steps, a drop on top then cure it hard, and then a drop on the bottom and cure it hard also. It cures quickly and without any tackiness. Now this creates the head of the fly and secures the eyes on. Now we will use the flex formula to create the profile of the fly. Squeeze a fair amount around the fly, just behind the eyes, and then use a bodkin to brush it back onto the fibers. Pull up the fibers slightly, and then cure the resin into place. Now this resin stays flexible, but it still cures without any tack. If you have any long fibers hanging down close to the hook point, then trim them off slightly so it doesn't impede your hook set. Then I like to add one more coat of the Flex formula to give the head a more professional and neat look. Also, covering the eyes with this Flex formula will really ensure that they stay on. Just make sure to keep the fly rotating before you cure it so it will cure evenly. Now it's time to trim this fly. I like to make sure that there aren't any errant flash fibers sticking out. 
and then I like to shape the other fibers into a more bait fish profile. This can take some time, but don't over trim this. Little cuts at a time, because you can always trim more off, but you can't put more back on. Now you should end up with something similar to this, a rough profile of a bait fish. And when wet, it looks really good. Now to ensure that this resin cures very well, you can place it near a sunny window, as the UV rays from the sun will help finish curing anything that was missed by the light. And there we have it, the finished fly. It's lightly weighted, has a hot spot gill area, and has a nice profile for a saltwater or warm water bait fish. And they're fairly easy to tie once you get into a groove. Just so you know, I was able to get you guys a discount at Risen Fly, where you can get their hooks, beads, and other awesome fly tying materials. They even sell rods, reels, and other fly fishing equipment as well, at an awesome price for their high quality. Use McFly at checkout for a discount on their already amazing priced gear. Also guys, check out some of my merchandise like hats, shirts, sweaters, mugs, stickers, and more with my awesome logo on them. Link to both the Risen website and my merchandise are in the description section of this video. I will see you on the next video, now you go catch some fish.